Hi, my name is Sarah Spangalo and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Swarm Technologies. So working at Google X was very awesome overall. I was so excited to start there. It's a place where extremely smart people come together. Um, often they're kind of the best from where they came from and they come to Google X because it's, some, it's a place where they can use all those skills and expertise and work on problems that will affect the real world, which is kind of a dream for an engineer. So working on a drone or a high-altitude balloon that will solve your connectivity or a self-driving car technology. There's a lot of energy there. People are very excited about what they're working on. You know, I think the biggest thing that I probably learned there was around culture and how to grow teams and how to keep people happy and how to be very clear in communicating goals and whether or not people are meeting milestones. And I think that's very important to kind of build out that culture in the way that we want to and ensure expectations are very clear and that we can all make sure that we're working towards the same goal. I decided that I really liked throwing parties. So I put up posters that I was going to start a party planning business, which was my first business. I think I was like 13 or 14. Someone actually ripped off a little paper with my phone number and called me and they asked me to do this party for their son and it was a pirate themed party and I went all out there was a treasure hunt and a fishing for gold and a treasure chest and it was this elaborate thing that I spent probably like hundreds of hours putting together it was super fun and I guess that was you know the first streak of entrepreneurship that I had um, which you know led to me later exploring other forms of entrepreneurship including starting swarm and the best the best part of this is that I charged her $100 for this event, which again was hundreds of hours, so it was making probably a dollar an hour. And she actually gave me $200. So my revenue was 2x what I expected, um, which if that ever happened in a real company, I'm sure people would be very thrilled. A lot of people get very obsessed with big, fancy, elaborate missions that are going to be very expensive and take a long time to develop and a lot of money to develop and I think actually quite a lot can be done with very small satellites in a very quick timeline. So with Swarm we actually treat our satellites more like software than hardware and that's because we can iterate them in a few months. They cost tens of thousands of dollars to deploy um, and that has enabled us to do a lot with a relatively low amount of funding relative to other big space companies out there. It would be interesting to see if more people could kind of use their creativity and use their skills and try to work on quicker, lower cost missions. And I think that would enable us to iterate quicker, to test things faster. So something that I've learned from one of my favorite hobbies, which is flying small planes, is basically how to remain calm in moments of stress, which is really important for pilots to have, is obviously your life and the life of your passengers is dependent on your performance when you're flying. So that has been a very useful skill in running a company, obviously. There's in particular been some instances where like the stall horn didn't work and you know it's a pretty critical piece of equipment. There's ways to deal with that. But in that moment of realizing, oh, this thing isn't working, what does that mean for me? Should I land? Should I not land? Um, really quick decision making needs to happen. Taking a breath, thinking through it calmly, and making a decision on the course of action um, is something that I've learned from that hobby. And also just, it's really fun. So it's nice to go out and do something super fun once in a while. So a time in my life that I struggled most was probably in grad school. Um, as many of you know that are getting masters and PhDs, grad school can be a very stressful, isolating uh, time. And I, I think it's well known that a lot of grad students suffer from anxiety and depression and a lot of mental health issues. Um, and I certainly was in that category. I struggled a lot with imposter syndrome when I first got there. I thought I was the dumbest person in the room. I struggled for never feeling like I was kind of of accomplishing anything. I never got the A pluses that I was used to getting in my undergrad. I didn't feel like I was getting the right kind of feedback from advisors. You just never feel like you're 
you're good enough. So I think that's very normal. I've talked to a lot of friends that have felt similar in grad school and I consider them some of the smartest people I know. I think when I finally defended my PhD and I won awards and people were saying really positive things about my research, it was only then that I realized, oh, maybe I'm not a fraud. Maybe I actually know something. So I think my advice would be just to believe in yourself and continue to work hard um, and to seek out the mentors that will help you kind of have that reassurance along the way. So people are often surprised to learn that I grew up doing ballet and I actually studied classical ballet and did these fancy British ballet exams growing up. And it was a, it was a highly structured, um, lots of discipline involved, lots of control. I think it helped me become very disciplined about my schoolwork and, and hopefully that's led to me being disciplined throughout my career and organized and those sorts of things. So someone that has inspired me my whole life is Shelly Shear, who um, started the dance school where I grew up. Shelly is just, um, she's a wonderful person and she just brings together all of these amazing qualities. She's highly intelligent, she's very elegant, um, she's aware, she thinks of how decisions will affect everyone around her, and she's a successful entrepreneur. So growing up, I, I really idolized her, and I love going back and visiting and, and telling her my stories of pursuing stuff um, with starting companies. And uh, yeah, so thank you, Shelley. So I think there's been a big dialogue about women in engineering or in tech or in leadership positions. And it's something that I get asked pretty often, you know, how does it feel to be a female entrepreneur, female founder? I'm just kind of sick of answering that question. I think sometimes people don't expect maybe that there'll be a woman CEO um, at a company. But now we have this great thing called the internet where you can research so you know before when you go into a meeting. I know a ton of extremely talented uh, female entrepreneurs and I think we should just focus on the companies and how great they are and yes we should be good role models and show that it can be done but I'd rather kind of shift the narrative to you know what we're doing in these companies and how phenomenal they are.